Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're very well. And we are once again at the Church of St Mary the Virgin, Little Ilford. A lovely little church. And uh, I did telephone yesterday and I've been told it will be open today so keep every extremity that is crossable crossed. My last visit was 16th of April and I think it was the first proper warm day we'd had and it was really lovely. I arrived early on a Sunday morning and it was stunning weather. It was really warm. I had to take one of my jackets off and I was a bit miffed about the church being closed because it was meant to be open for a morning service but the miffed feeling quickly disappeared when I found myself in a beautiful little churchyard which at that hour of the uh, Sunday morning didn't have all this background traffic noise of the buses and everything else and it was a really nice experience it was very quiet very peaceful full of bird song and absolutely lovely <clears throat> and I did do a tour of its churchyard then so if you skip back to round about the 16th of April or just afterwards because I don't always upload them on the day sometimes it's quite a while until I upload my content because I do film quite a lot of it and there's editing and stuff like that I'll get us further back and then get the other phone out and we'll get some details of the church. It's one of my favourites this one. I do love this church, it really is lovely. That's better. Right, I should just grab my other phone out quickly and then I shall read the details to you. St Mary's Church, Little Ilford. It's mainly 12th century. It had its chancel rebuilt and a south porch and family chapel to the Lethulia family added in 1724. It remained a parish church until 1938, at which point it became a chapel of ease to St Michael's Church on Romford Road. It is a grade one listed building and does contain Commonwealth war graves. St Michael's Church along the Romford Road I've not been inside that one yet, but you may remember the photographs of the big bronze statue of St. Michael on the church. It was a lovely, uh, lovely statue. It's the war grave one. There's a uh, private 76485 F. Tomlinson, Royal Fusiliers, 20th of February 1919. So that poor young man would have come home obviously injured and died later on. This is or are some of the old fonts from the church from the church. This is one of them. It's got detail still carved into it. I won't um because this is cremation cremations here so I won't focus in on that too too much I'm sure then I believe that's another font there can we zoom in on that that's perfect that's it it's right in front of that are two memorials modern ones very modern <clears throat> and it's got old 18th century gravestones in it for the most part and 19th century as I say I covered a lot of them before well covered all of them before on a nice early Sunday morning location I went to earlier today was uh, Woodgrange Park Cemetery where well, you're not really uh, well you're not not really you are not allowed to film or photograph as of 2001 and interestingly enough the year 2000 is when they had a big scandal on their hands when they sold off a chunk of land and the remains of 14,000 people had to be dug up including air aid victims 
and moved to elsewhere in the cemetery. Oh my goodness, this wasn't like this the last time I came here, look. If you remember, when I came here before, because I went round this way and did the tombs and that, that wasn't like that, so that's fairly new, what a shame. I mean, it's sad that it's got like, I hope it fell apart naturally, rather than being vandalised apart, is what I, I shall say. This is its altar window, so I assume that's where its altar is. The house of God, you may assume nothing. And I was told if I get here for about 20 past five, then they'll be able to let me in to take some pictures and video. So keep your fingers crossed. As I rang about this yesterday. So, this is our exterior view. So, we shall now go back off over to the front. It's nice and sunny again, a bit noisier than it was, or a lot noisier than it was on my last visit, I must admit. But we can't have everything. Stones down there. Right, and that's our exterior views of the church. Go back round, and I shall then wait. And if no one arrives, I shall be very, very upset. can see how old this is just by the windows like that it's bell tower that's Essex weatherboard in that I'm no expert in these things I remember being told this when I was younger by an older person that's obviously been restored in later time but yeah you got pretty much an original 12th century church and thank you to the Lithulia family for this its chancel was obviously rebuilt and the private family chapel, so such a small church, I should imagine what the Lavulia family did was pretty much a big, big rebuild. But you think before 1724 it would have been even smaller because you wouldn't have had that bit on it. Anyways, hopefully we shall be getting in soon, so we shall, we shall see. Yeah, there's a couple of old gravestones here. This one is SI. 1738 SJH 1790 so. Join me on the inside if all goes according to plan And we are in Thanks very much, thank you. And now you see the beauty of the stained glass, which you can't see from the outside. And think of the history that this building has seen since the 12th century. All the prayer and the love and everything else. the high altar. I don't normally show those first but being such a special little church we thought we would.
and they've got some really beautiful stained glass <clears throat> really beautiful as you can see St John and St Mary And they have plenty of memorials as well for quite a small church. So this is what I love about these. William Storrs Fry of the Manor House East Ham. I wonder if there's any connection to Elizabeth Fry. Here you've a Tudor one now. I am taking photos as I go along as well. Uh, this is the the role of honour for the war dead, so we'll focus on this, of course. As I'm always saying, we owe these men a very great debt, don't we? I'll do one panel at a time because of the reflection. That's better. Oh, sorry, this is a list of rectors, not um. What did? I do beg your pardon. They were teaching me to read the, the top. Mary the Virgin, list of rectors. Beautiful, isn't it? Miguel Iglesias. Hmm. And these are old medieval or Tudor ones, these are like from tomb brasses.
and this is the Lathulia family um, private chapel for the family chapel through there. What a lovely place! Really is beautiful. And as you can see, it's a very tiny little chapel with the memorial to John Lathulia of Aldersbrook in the parish, in this parish, the squire and Elizabeth, his most deserving wife. I'll take a picture of what I can. Margaret, daughter of William Sloper. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Beautiful little tiny glass stained window. I didn't notice that before. That is the Lathilia family coat of arms. <clears throat> and we've got uh, the memory of Smart. Smart Lathilia, a squire of Aldersbrook. And there's a picture of him there, look, so I'll take a picture of that. End of his memorial. Yeah, that's the old parish chest there. Look, that's interesting. That's eighteenth century, that is. silver and such like would have been locked in years ago from the will of James Hayes oh this is the charity I'm always talking about Charles Lathalia Esquire and it's the last memorial over here Oh, I did that one, didn't I? Right. That concludes a pretty much our tour. It's a lovely little church. So, hope you all found that interesting, and thank you for watching. And if you can, pop a donation online to this church, please do so, because it's a beautiful one. Take care everyone and thank you for watching. I'll give you one last sweep round. Take care all, thanks for watching.